All righty, all righty. I think we actually live right now, but uh, it'll it'll indicate. It says me. meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. There we go. Yep, <laughs> we live right now. All right. We got Sister Nubia War for Poke in the building. I'm gonna have to take. I'm gonna have to take some. Uh, so it's echoing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's streaming. It's streaming live for sure. I just have to. Uh, I had to take that away, and I am going to actually. I'm going to find it on my phone, so I can put it on on my Facebook, the actual link, so that people can come through. Let me see. Dude, but we definitely live for sure. I see it on my phone. All right. No, I'm just, just about to uh, put it on Facebook, let people know that we're, we're alive. All right uh, now. You can but, share it to Archaeology of the African World, too, if you like. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. The, uh, uh, do, 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 let me see. Share to in that group. It was, it was, what was that one? Archaeology? Archaeology of the African world. That's the group that we're. Not of, not of the African world. Is it that one? Mm -hmm. Archaeology of the African world, right? That yes. One. Okay. Because, you know, I got so many different sure groups. You're in a lot of groups. Different, yeah, I'm in a lot of groups. So <laughs> in and of, yeah, I got you. So archaeology of the African world. Definitely. Hold on. One last thing. I'm gonna make sure I check. No, but I'll share it to other groups later. Okay. For sure. But um, here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna make sure that it's pub public on there. All right. So like I said, we got Nubia Warford Polk in the building, and I appreciate her uh, coming in to do this interview. In the summertime, which I told her I wasn't really planning on doing any interviews <laughs> because I've been oh, right before because uh, I work at a school. And so right before the last weeks of school, I was just beat. I was trying to do this little thing on the side. I had mm -hmm. to research people and, and things like that. It, it just took a lot of time and then also personal time from what I have to do on a daily basis. Uh, yeah. And it just wore me out. And so and then also people that helped me. Uh, you know, with my, my little platform and wore them out too. You know, And so when I said I was going to have another interview and it was like, oh man, I thought you said you ain't going to do no more. So I'm like, true, true. But, but, you know, she's going to do a little presentation. So take a little bit of, you know, off of me a little bit, but, uh, but I appreciate you uh, coming along. Uh, I, I, like I said, I was going to see if you can tell her how we met. Uh, it was through a Facebook group and I had forgot for a little bit as I got so busy that I, I, I was, you know, I, I had you and my, my friend, I believe we were, were we Facebook friends from the, from the outset or? We were Facebook friends. Uh, I think we had a mutual friend in common. Okay. And, and then um, I think I asked you a question, do you have a show or something like that? And yeah. then, then we talked a little bit. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. You know, and are, are, are you, are you an app? Are you an admin of that Facebook group though? Yes. That's that probably, is, okay. Yeah. That is my Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got you. Got you. So that makes sense. So I think I came in there and I dropped, and I dropped the video. Which one was it? I don't remember <laughs> what video it was. I don't remember. Was it Car Carter Cooney? Maybe it was Carter Cooney or something like that. You may have, because I like, yeah. I, I like Dr. Cooney. She's really. I think that's how we started the dialogue forward. right there. And I right. Said she right. Really, I said, she's really cool. And you know, and so and so open minded and right, right. about with the you know, about with the challenges of archaeology and the mentality in the academia. And she's just really cool. And so I've been kind of I kind of um every time she does something, I I uh, I take a look at it because she comes from such a such a really, really open perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh like I told you, I I I learned more and more about her through following her on Twitter. And that's how I found out more and more that I was more impressed with her. And you know how some of these Egyptologists do it as she says, coming out of her mouth, going through these traditional schools and, and things like that. They don't like to yeah, talk about yeah. certain things. They don't. But, it, but anyway, so your your expertise, your field of uh is in Nubia. 
you, you like Nubia. to talk, right and you like to get into ancient nubia and what what sparked your interest in in in, in that well first off i want to let everybody know you are a, a uh the, the title uh you said was a cultural can you can give the title because i'll let you <laughs> let you i'm a okay. cultural scientist in right. other words i study the culture I study the oral history. I study the written history, as yes. well as as the um, material history, which is called archaeology. Right. Um, you know what is unearthed, and I prefer to be called a cultural scientist, um, but traditionally known as an archaeologist. Right. And um, my specialty is Kush, so I'm a Kushologist. Got you, got you, and I'll be looking down back and forth just in case anybody has any questions coming in on the chat or whatnot possibly okay. um um you know yeah uh, dr karakuni she talked about egypt and things like that and i always want to get somebody to talk about nubia a little bit more in the nubia i did reach out in the past to solange ashby and i know you heard of her and i know she was she was real busy at the time so i i, I um she contacted me back and said she was you know so busy at the time so i just kind of put that on a on a you know in the back and so i just kind of went on to other things or whatever but i still wanted to to get somebody in to talk about uh nubia and 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 things like that and why mm -hmm. why um and well anyway so you 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 um so what what started you on that journey or whatnot well as a child i was always interested in rocks i was always interested in the past gotcha and i started studying rocks when i was like six or seven years old and I would look up rocks in the book and where they came from and stuff. And so um, I went to a library and of course, um, you know, my sister said, you're interested in archeology, span which I thought, you know, studying dinosaurs and stuff at six years old was archeology. span Right, right, right. And so I said, oh, I said, I saw, you know, the, the treasures of King Tut mm. from Tutankhamun. And so that opened my eyes and I always wanted to study ancient, um, the ancient past. At yeah. the time, I did not know that his grandmother was Queen T, uh, Nubian, and mm. <clears throat> that he had Nubian roots in the 18th dynasty. And so from then, I just really start, you know, kind of just as a novice, as, you know, as my own enth enthusiasm took me with right. studying archaeology. I was studying Egypt and then learning it as a teenager, the juxtaposition between Egypt and Nubia, that there was this disagreement about a lot of things between Egypt and Nubia and um, pursued um, anthropology in school. First, I was studying my PhD, but now I'm going to just be a naturopath doctor. So I'll satisfy okay. both of those okay. as well. Yeah. And then so it kind of took me there. And then I went to the ASCAT conference way, we're talking about way when I was like 30, 37 years old. ASCAT, okay. the Association for the Study right. of Classical African Civilization. Right. And I met my mentor, Jegna, mm. um, Dr. Anderson Thompson, who okay. introduced me to Dr. Ben, to Dr. Clark. Wow. Um, to Asa Hilliard, to Dr. Marimba Ani, to Dr. Leonard Jeffries, to Dr. Scobie, to Dr. Right. Mackey. Now, now you're talking. Now you're talking. And, and then from that point, you know, you know, he went around and said, yeah, she's going to study archaeology. And at that point, I said, well, I'm going to do Native American archaeology since, you know, it's so hard to get. They said, oh, no, you're not. And everybody, everybody <laughs> had the same response. Oh, no, you're not. Right, right, you're right. With, you're with us now. You're with right. us now. Right, and, right. Um, I always wanted yeah. to go to the ASCAC. I always wanted to. Maybe maybe one day if, the, if it gets Well, when the, they open back up, but, you know, they do, they do it virtually, so they have not stopped. Oh, okay. So okay. So okay. So well, virtually, hopefully I can, I can make that one, but eventually when things open up again, I want to make one of those physical ones. Maybe I can meet you there actually. Too. Yes. Yeah. That, one of those. I definitely go. I definitely right. Go. Right. So now that's, you, that opened no, me up. That's, so that, that really, that opened me up and that's, right, right. you know, and that's just it. That's, that's it. In a nutshell. Now, 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 uh, you're from the Detroit area. You, you live in Detroit. I'm from Detroit. Probably. Yeah. Okay, and you've been there most of your most of your most life, of my right? life. I I for a while I lived in Denver, Colorado. Well, I was right. on this journey in like 2010. I went to Sudan. I first went in 2007. Mm. I came back in 2010 uh, on an invitation from Dr. Um, Ali Usman from the University of Khartoum, who is the head of the archaeology department. Okay. 
And so then, you know, I just, um, I kept on coming back. I taught school, school, met Dr. Richard Logan at a um, Nubian conference, a Meroitic conference in Paris and was invited to um, volunteer on a site. So that's the site I've been doing. Okay. Um, have you, have, I, I know you heard of Anthony Browder. Have you ever visited his site? Or... I've not been to Anthony Browder's site. I was okay. planning on coming to his site this June, but he said that they're getting it prepared <coughs> architecturally to open it up to the public. And so I was not able to come. Okay, okay. So when, what, what school did you really start to get into African studies and in, in archaeology or, or uh, that, in that, that, when, when you went to Denver? Or? That start, no, I went to, oh. that started um, in, um, in my studies, probably more so in my uh, um, master's degree studies. Gotcha. Um, and yeah. so I would, but before that, I was doing study on my own, led by Dr. Anderson Thompson, okay. which, he, which he swears, he said, you've done more than most PhDs already, but you just don't have a PhD. Right, right. And um, he passed in 2019 and he left me, you know, left me with saying last visit. He said, just keep on going, just keep on doing it. You're on the right track. But he set me on the right track. Gotcha. Um, um, introducing me to people where I went to, um, when I was in cartoon um, I got a chance to volunteer at NCAM, which is the National, National Council of um, Antiquities and Museums, which is the National Museum there. Okay. And so I volunteered there as a registrar. I got a chance to look at, um, at uh, the, the pin of um, Cecil Rhodes. And um, uh, you know, uh. as he was studying for Harvard mm. University and what he had taken down as you know his notes on the artifacts that he left there so you know the the, the, the rate the racist cecil rose right the the, the very racist cecil uh, right cecil rose. right right but um you know he did there he op opened it up and he pretty much said that there wasn't after he had done you know there wasn't very much else to say you know that the mm. nubians were black and the egyptians were white when we know that they were both black people mm. Mm. tell me about it all right no, I had, I had a question back back in my uh, mind. I was gonna gonna ask. Uh, well, I guess you already talked about your mentor, and so that, that person there. And um, so women. That's what that was. That was the thing. Women. Have you noticed? Uh, not not so many. I guess women of color or black women in particular in in the archae archaeology well, field um, or Nubia from especially in the beginnings. I'm sure you probably notice the disparity of of uh, African wearing African American women in well the disparity on women period um, sure. but anthropology yeah. is a field that is mostly with women now people studying um, archaeologists there's a lot of women in archaeology a lot of black women in archaeology they're just not highlighted and as far as the the uh, students of archaeology in uh, in Sudan itself in Africa, there are thousands of black archaeologists, tens, tens of thousands. Gotcha. They're not highlighted. The ones we hear about are the most famous one. I, I call uh -huh. those the, the glittery ones. You gotcha. mentioned you mentioned the only black Egyptologist in the world, which is Solange Ashby. Solange Ashby, correct. She's the only black Egyptologist. Right. But her focus is actually uh, Nubian studies. Right. And so she and I do have some conversations um, you know, she said, you know, she's very open. Let me know what, how I can be a help. Um, oh, that's, that's why I, I asked about Solange Ashby, because I, that's what I heard. I, I was like, wasn't she the first, I was figuring, I read somewhere that she's the first, um, and oh, first and only, or is she? She is the only and the first. Like, wow. um, there is Black a Egyptologist, which of course we know were, um. A whatologist? <laughs> A Kushologist. Oh, Kushologist. You know, gotcha. Martin Delaney was a Kushologist. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. Gotcha. Kushologist. Gotcha. So, um, first recognized in academia. You know, gotcha. we, we have to point that out. And then um, there's one coming right after her, which is Deborah Hurd, who is a Black Egyptologist, and she should be getting her PhD in a year or so. Okay. So, then we're coming along. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, why Nubia? And uh, why the why the importance of uh, of Nubia to you and and, and you well, think, to us I, as uh, the as African of, diaspora? 
Yes, that's the big question, not mm. the personal question. The importance of Nubia is that Nubia is a, is a more ancient civilization. Mm. It is the most ancient civilization that we know of in the world. It's always going to be downplayed. It has been up to this point downplayed by academia. But we know the roots um, of, uh, of, a, of a civilization that reached their pinnacle was more than 10,000 years ago. And as I'm going to show you in my presentation, I'll show you a little bit about that. But ancient Nubia is, is, is the precursor for ancient Kemet, which is known as ancient Egypt. Right, um, right. And so these civilizations were not always juxtaposed to each other. They didn't fight against each other. They're like cousins. They're like people in the same family. Right. Um, and sometimes they're friends and sometimes they're not. And we right. all have families, so we know about that. So right. these are tens and thousands of years. And we know that the most ancient of the people um, back to the first dynasty and pre-dynastic period, we know that these people were Black. Now, the reason why there was a question uh, about their ethnicity, of course, is because many of them had straight hair. Um, mm. There's nobody who has a monopoly on straight hair. Correct. Every, every, everyone has straight hair. Right. So, right. Um, and the reason for straight hair mostly being is because people come from um, high altitudes. A lot of okay. people in high altitudes have straight hair and the hair follicle it, because it's colder there. And all that Definitely. Kind of but Definitely. It does not you, you see any, that you see that on certain Asian groups that are more straighter than others because of that. It, yeah, correct. yeah, I mean you see the curly hair in right. Asian groups. Absolutely. And then um, so when we, you know, when we think of things like that, we have to really, you know, open up our mind to know that you know, especially in America, especially in America, because uh, in Scandinavia out here, yes. you'll see cur you see you'll see Norwegians. When I first came here, I'm like with with curly hair, like almost like Afro like curly hair, and they from mm -hmm. Scandinavia. You know, and then even their eyes, it, you know, like in the States, they call them, they'll call them, you know, Asian eyes or whatever right. to try to be derogatory or chinky eye, try to be de derogatory. But you'll see in Scandinavia, a lot of blonde hair, blue eyes with that, with the kind of a closed yes. you know, eyelid. Epicanth epicanthic right. fold. There you um, go. The, the, the proper so, term. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but, but the thing is, is that like and you so, said, Everybody has all of those. You know right. what I mean? Every race right. has all of those different right. Right. Um, different differences. Right. So I guess we can start to get into it, uh, in, okay. into the presentation, unless there was anything else that I might have left out um, to the folks that's coming in or is going to watch this later. Uh, we we have Nubia uh, Ward for Polk here, who's into... Uh, who's going to get, uh, start a presentation about ancient uh, Nubia, the origins of ancient Nubia. Um, yeah, let me see if we can uh, share the screen. Okay. Should I just push the share screen? Oh, no, no. I think I'm the one who... Uh... I think I was the one who... Wasn't it me? Yeah, you're the, you're the one that has to control that. You have to unlock it for me, I guess, because it's saying host okay. disabled participant screen share. I think I must have to make host. Yeah, right there. I'll okay. just make you, I just made you the host, boom. There we go. And so let me share my screen. There we go. There we go. And then we're gonna do this one. All right, so these the origins of ancient Kush, um, nice. and it's a journey further into antiquity. As I said, the civilization is much older than thought um, from the words of Chancellor Williams. That that Some at the very earliest classical, period, classical work there, classical yes, work, Chancellor Williams, yes. the black, black civilization, civilization. Yes. right. In the areas later called Sudan, Egypt was fully developed with all of the areas of civilized life all in place. One of the things is art, is culture, language, all right? And those are the three to in, in animal development, animal husbandry, and in agriculture, those are the tenets of culture. Um, African orientation, just to show you here, mm. um, this, is, this is Sudan, now it's divided about here. Um, right. North Sudan and South Sudan. 
Because in Sudan now, you know, you have those the Arabs in the north and in, in, in the south, and then also you got tribal within the south Sudan. Sudan, you got a lot of tribal tribalism, tribal fighting, and so from now. What it, now, when you say now, let's make sure that people know that those are people that have adopted Islam, and right. they are also Black Africans. Got you. So um, their mentality is Arab, but they are very much Black people. Gotcha. And now the change is coming through. The people in um, Sudan say that. I just want to let you know, like he said, how how close it is to Arabia, so you can see how the cultures um, could be have united. How easy it was right. to Islamize um, them. Um, this is the southern orientation. Why is this the southern orientation? Or why like did you map. say that this is um, Africa upside down? It is how the Africans saw Africa with um, the they saw it from this flow of the Nile River from this direction. The flow is downward. Uh, we always say that the Nile is flowing um, up, but from this direction, the Nile River is flowing downward. Sudan predates all known cultures. Uh, we know evidence that high activity as far back as 1.5 million years um, outdates Mesopotamia. It says, this, it really means Mesopotamia is 1.4 million years. So that activity outdates Mesopotamia by 100,000 years. This is an African elevation map. Just want to quickly get us oriented to what we're talking about or where we're talking about. That's why um, I eat all the maps. So everybody who's not familiar with where Sudan is. And this is how I figured that this is the African origins. The question is basically how South is South. We can hmm. see that people, Africans uh, migrating, probably um, puddle jumped following the rivers and going from river to river to tributary to mm. get up to what we know what is no one would take this route going straight across the desert where right. see that there's no so everybody that would go from river to river to tributary even when africans um left egypt to go west they went downwards to this right. area and then puddle jumped across to this mm. small area here to to go to the niger river as we know it Yes. But folks would say that in that area by the Sierra is right now, there wasn't always the desert there. It wasn't always the desert, as we saw right. in those maps, that right. the area was green. And we're going to talk about that, too. Good question. Right. Mm -hmm. This is Lake Inyansa. Yeah. Uh, this is Lake Inyansa is known as Lake Victoria, one of the sources of the White Nile. And we go up into this area. And this area here is where we're going to be talking about. And this is ancient Kush. Um, we also talk about cultural continuity, the use of the cowrie shells. We know, as Robert said, that the area was, was green and marshy. And, it, and we find these cowrie shells in West Africa, we find them in Sudan, we find them in caves. And it indicates to us that there was water, that there was a, there was a deep, that at one point, Africa was submerged under a sea. This is um, the archeological site that I volunteered at, in Abu Iratia. And Abu Irati uh, is in the Nubian Desert, in the Butana Desert. And this mm. column dates back to 20 BC to 5 AD. 5 AD, we think that the priests pretty much toppled the, um, toppled the temple, which was a temple to Osset, commonly known as Isis, um, toppled this temple and hid a lot of the spiritual items so that it would not be taken because so many things were left there um, once it was unearthed. We think that most likely the priests jealously hid these items so that they would not be taken. Yeah. Um, this here is a, is an artifact. This is a, the remnants of what have been a black pot. This predates um, Nub the, what is known about Nubian civilization. This is more than ten thousand years old, and I found this artifact. And um, this pot probably would go around probably about. 25 inches if, this, if it completed the circumference um, going all the way around. And the, the ceramist, which was, we worked in an archeological team that was international. And we had people from France, we had people from Italy, we had people from the United States, myself, Dr. Richard Lobin, and another student of his. We had people from Sudan, of course, and we had um, people from the, from the National Council of Antiquities and um, we had people from Russia. And the ceramist who was um, Svetlana Sergei, 
And she kept on carrying this around and saying, this is impossible. This is impossible. Mm. And I said, Svetlana, it's in your hand. It's not impossible. It's right mm. there. This is the proof that is much older. Because she and I were having discussions about that. And she said, oh, no, it's not older. I said, that's what academia says. But wait, we'll probably find something. And that day, I found something. Right. Okay. So Sudan pyramids out. And Dylan and Dylan in in Sudan, you had to you had to deal with that that guy Hawass. Hawass. Uh, well, yeah. D- Dylan in Egypt, definitely. Right. But um, but Hawass Hawass is I call him a star archaeologist. So sometimes mm. he just goes for the most glittery things, which are the royal things. Now right. the royal tombs are definitely spectacular. Right. There's some time of some the clues about how. The people lived in the civilization may go may be something that is not of royal lineage. Right, um, right, right. This is Sudan pyramids outnumber those in English. There's approximately 178 in Sudan and 155 in Egypt. That was a big, big thing that I heard when I first, yeah, years ago when I before I started looking into uh, Nubia, I was like, wow, I didn't realize that, you know, years yeah. ago. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, and, I, and I think to this day, a lot of people don't realize that still. That they don't. Industry. They don't. And yeah. people, um, it was called the overlooked civilization because people right. didn't even know um, Sudan because of how academia has treated it, right. has not highlighted it at all. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the civilization known as ancient Nubia or ancient Kush. Um, and it has also been named, known as several different names, Ta-Nehisi. Land of the Serpent, Kush, which means sacred grass, possibly coming from India, Meroe, temporary lake, because we found aqueducts lit going into that area. So that means that they probably um, moved the water from the Nile to so that they can have fresh water in the area. Very um, interesting technology to have happened, mm. you know, 20 BC. Um, you know, they, they had engineers that were very meticulous and precise. Nubia, which means land of gold as well. As as, as, as we heard, uh, talking about precise, as we heard, a, I read a new report, you know, just today and yesterday about in Nubia, how they, where they, they had something about some tombs, like the get that's, that's mirrored the galaxy or something like that. You read that recently? Something about, about the tombs mirror, well, all of the pyramids um, mirror. Something like that, um, uh, celestial so, right. objects. Right. So, right. like, you get a constellation right. that the pyramids mimic all of the constellations. Right. So it's right. not just it's not just the ones in Kemet. It's the right. ones in Nubia. In Nubia as well. And I, yeah, that was wow. Yeah. 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 And so you know, so we know that these people knew how to manipulate the stars, Absolutely. and that there was a connection to the stars. Right. Um. This is the Nile River, which the original name was just was the Habi River or the Hapi River. Hapi. The yeah. people don't have the P sound in their language, so the P's probably sounded like B's in their in their language. Oh, okay, gotcha. You know, yep. So they don't have it. If any any time, um, even B's, um, if B's they would they would they kind of juxtaposition them. They would say brown instead of brown. So that is just how the Nubian language is structured. Gotcha. And so we're going to be talking about um, pretty much Kerma. We're going to talk about Jebel Barco here. We're going to talk about these cemeteries, Nuri, El Karu, right there. We won't be talking about Sedanga except to one point where the artifact was found in the Sedanga Cemetery. And one important name uh, for ancient Nubia I have to mention is Tasseti. Okay, so land of the heart. Mm-hmm. which we figure um, Asa Hilliard actually figured that it is buried under Lake Nubia, which is an artificial lake that was formed so that the, um, Egypt could have electricity. And so they, they dammed up the water and they flooded out um, many of the places in, in Lake Nubia, which would be in this area of Nubia mm-hmm. on the top. And it's flooded. All these, all these sites here in Aswan, Philae, right. Dhaka, right. all of those are flooded and they're under Lake Nubia right now. It was flooded in 1962 okay. in order to electrify um, the Cairo. Mo- mo- modernize and electrify it, yeah. Right. Now, now, I see one name that's I've always heard about, about early, when it comes to early civilization there, Napata. 
Napara. Napara. Yes. Napara or Napara is is a cemetery at Jebel Barco. And we're going to talk okay. about it. And that is gotcha. definitely, we're talking about Kush. That's an important area because yeah. That, yeah. that's a very important area because it is the, the spiritual center. Gotcha. And one thing to that you notice that, that Africans are always spiritual people. And yes, Kush in Egypt is in Africa. These people are Africans. Um, politically, they've been moved out and they're, they're more associated with Arabia because the people in the land right now are, um, are Arabians. So they're associating with that politically. But as you saw on the map, it is definitely in Africa. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just to show you this point, this is Africa, all of this. And this is Arabia to the right. right, right. And this again, right. we're going to be talking about the heartland of Kush. Excuse me, uh, Robert, I'm getting over a cold. No, it's, no, it's all, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Kush, um, heart, Kush heartland. Scholars in Sudan um, <clears throat> and residents protest excavations. When I first came there, people said, why are you coming to study in Sudan? They would say, there's nothing here. The best finds are in Egypt. And I said, I've, yes. I've always heard European <laughs> Europeans talk like that too, you know. The people, the residents, the actual Nubians say this too. Wow. So, you know, we were at a conference wow, wow. and people are saying these kind of things. You know what I mean? Um, that, you know, that they're just coming to the conference just to see what's going on. Mm, mm. But they're actually saying these things. You know, why are you studying in here? There's nothing. Co colonization here. runs deep, I tell you. Yes. Well, uh, yeah. Again, the cemeteries that I just showed you, Meroe, El Kiru, um, Nuri, Jebel Parko, Sedango, which we're not going to talk much about except for a really, really important artifact that was found there. Right. And I'm just going to show you quickly a little bit of the Royal Cemeteries of Meroe. That's in Bejawia, that's near Bejawia. And that is the town in which um, I did my excavations as well. Um, this did you, so did you so did you feel safe when you was there or or or, or the yes it's, uh, a very, it's a very right, safe place right, right. i mean, well, I mean um, for the people that think about possibly going to to sudan and, and that and those areas or, or, good question you would you good would question. encourage you would still encourage them to to go definitely good question it's i feel safe um the fighting is on the abia border i did see army tanks um you know, moving past to go um, on the IBA border. It's, I've heard that it's ceased a bit now, right. Um, but it, right where I am, I was about 700 miles from where the fighting was gotcha. in the middle of the desert. This is the overhead view of the cemeteries. The one we're going to be talking about is this a one. beautiful area right there. Yeah, Yeah, this is the pyramid of Amani Kashito, who was one of a very important um, Kushite queen. Um, more a close up on her has the most devastation because her pyramid, well, these pyramids were dynamited in the mid to late 19, 1860s by Giuseppe Ferlini, who was a pot hunter looking for gold and silver and diamonds and jewels and precious things. And so he was allowed to dynamite these pyramids. I mean, just if we had been living 100 years earlier and um, going to Sudan, we would have been able to find. Um, these pyramids intact. Um, he did find um, precious um, jewelry from the queen, Amana Kashito, but because people were not familiar with African um, jewelry and things like that in Africa, his, it was denied. People denied it. They said you didn't need to have this made someplace else. These things couldn't be from Africa. Africans don't have fine jewelry like that. So um, most of the finds ended up in Moscow and Germany in a museum. And, and so we still, because of that, we still have these, these pieces to look at. I'm sure that he probably got rid of some pieces, melting them down because they were pure gold. This is one of the pieces that's housed in a museum in Germany. And this is the bracelet of a Monica Chito. If you look closely at that face, you can see the African features, the larger lips, the yeah. larger nose, the slanted eyes. Um, here is a is a blend of set and the B. And the B is also represented as neat or knit. And knit or neat is known as the most high in the area, and the most high is recognized as a woman in this area because Africans understand that creation comes from a woman. 
And right. so they were very, very um, astute in that. And that's why our set was venerated so highly. Um, our set changes, you know, sometimes it'll be our set, sometimes it'll be neat. And then later on, you know, you, you get Ty Mary and the beloved land. And we think that's where the word Mary comes from is Ty Mary, which means beloved. And so that's why in the story of the Christian story, that's the reason why Mary's name is Mary, all coming from ancient Egypt. So right. she's a blend of, of, of Isis, mm. Neat, and Mary. And a <laughs> lot of people who are Christianized will, of course, not like to hear those kind of things, but it's just the truth. Um, all the, the, the story of Aset having an immaculate birth, mm. um, a birth that, you know without a father and things like that, that the, that the bird, she was impregnated by a bird in the Holy Trinity, all of that, which was originally Haru, Osai, uh, which was Haru, Aset, and Osir, and she was taken out in um, the, you know, and the Holy Spirit is what you got where Mary was taken out, um, comes from this place. That's the reason why when you say amen at the end of a sentence, because amen, amun, comes from ancient Kush and was known as the most high. Um, I have another presentation which talks about. And, and you know, when as a, as a kid saying amen, I always want, I always wonder what, 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 you know, after you're saying a prayer in English or whatever, then at the end you say amen, you just totally, like, what is this word amen? You never questioned it until. He never questioned it, but know, it comes never. From, from the Correct. book of Psalms. I questioned yeah. it as a kid, mm. and this is what my minister told me. He said <laughs> it, meant, it meant all men. And as a kid, I said, no, it doesn't. I, that doesn't mean that. I don't know what it means, but doesn't, you know, right. my mother would always, you know, give me the elbow, like, what? Right, Stop right. saying those things. What are you? I said, but I, I just could tell. It's just that way. Yeah. No, but my, anyway, my mom was like, you're asking too many questions, boy. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because, you know, if you believe, you just believe blindly. So, yeah. you know, that's Unfortunately. what they yeah, yeah. And this is um, a Monica Shito in the middle. And you see that Monica Shito is kind of a large woman. Mm which represented the wealth of the country, but people in Sudan favor well-endowed women that they think well-endowed women are beautiful, they represent uh, health, wealth, and if, you're, um, if, you, if you are married and your husband takes care of you and you're well-endowed, that means he's taking care of you well, right? So um, Monica Shido is right on the right, and then the god Happy is on Habi is on the left. And Habi represents the Nile River, the fertility and the strength of Nile River. And uh, a Petamek who is holding her arm up, giving her strength to rule uh, ancient Kush. And that she did, and that she did. This is her beautiful crown, one of those that was not able to be uh, um, right. you know, stolen by uh, Italian pot hunter Giuseppe Ferlini right. and the crown of Romana Cascino as she ruled um, from 41 to 12 BCE. Now there's a question, there's a story about one-eyed Candace and we're not sure if uh, Amenorinus um, did this or we're not sure if um, Amana Kishito and that is when Augustus Caesar came to take over, one of these queens, we're not, they're, they're called Candaces or the, the the ethnic name is, in, in reality, is Kendaki or Kentakes, people call them. Kendakis, and these are these great warrior empress women, and it means queen of queens or great mother. Mm. And we know the queen of Sheba was in this family too, but she was one of the empress of empresses. And so um, Minorinus or either uh, Amana Kishido went to riding on two elephants with a, with a cushion plush couch in between uh, and these two elephants and they came over in her army of a hundred thousand men and she spoke with augustus caesar and he she said she said what are you doing here and then he said he said he's coming to you know he's coming to take over he said well you can come in but you're not going to come out another lady you can come in but you're not going to leave here alive right another right. way and so she she and her soldiers sacked um his area you know got rid of his soldiers she had his bus taken and decapitated buried under her throne um, so she could step on his face every time she stepped, uh, went on his throne. That's what I love about wow. this Amana Kishida. Wow. Wow. This story in itself, I actually went to the place 
uh, where uh, that throne was, where she could step on his face every time. Uh, that's, just, that's just bad. That's what you would call, that's a bad, bad that's story. Right <laughs> so right, I love right. this story. I love this queen. Mm. I mean, that just tells you how the strength. And now Strabo, the, uh, the ancient uh, historian, said right. that she was built like a man, that she was stronger than a man. Now, Amada Kashido had one eye. And it's thought that she lost her eye in battle because not only was she the queen of the land, she fought on the on the front line. And so it's very possible that she took that bust herself and, um, you know, and decapitated it and, and uh, you know, and, and brought it back herself because she seemed like a very proud and strong uh, woman. Right. This is a monorenesis um, pyramid there. The, the, the specific difference is in Kushite periods, is pyramids is that they have from this period of the queen's ruling and all throughout, they have these monasteries. They have in the front of them, and this is this is this is where the the body was placed, and so people would um, come and bring offerings to them in death, and that's what can't happen in those Nubian cemeteries that are underneath the lake. So people come to the water side and they pour their offerings and send their offerings off in little boats and things to their cemetery because it's part of their culture to go to the cemetery and, um, and pay respect um, to their people. Robert, you have a question? No, no, no. I was, I was looking at the, the, the okay. site there. No, that was, no. So the queendom of Kush, I call it a queendom because these women ruled for 350 years. To me, if a women are ruling, it's not a kingdom, it's a queendom. And this queendom is 378 BCE. To they, have a, they, have a, they have a group out here in Norway called Queendom, actually. Uh, I think it consists of, uh, don't, don't get, get me to say it wrong, but at least three, I don't know originally if it was two, three, or four sisters out here of African descent, and they, they were like pretty much the first uh, to really, you know, talk about racism and, and things like that out here. And so they, they, they are, uh, so when you see, when you, when you see that word queen queen I, I have to look them up yeah they're really they're they're really uh pioneers out here <laughs> they've been, they, yeah yeah they, they they've done a lot of work out here a matter of fact I, I think I got one of them on my Facebook group okay. uh she's um yeah so they've they've been here for for plenty of years and they've been doing the activism work for a long time um and I'm very aware of them when I when I first got here um I haven't reached out and sp spoken to any of them. I'm I'm hoping to do that um, to get some of their their story. But I've they had a uh, somebody from Queendom or whatnot had a some work about Nordic uh, Nordic landscapes or something when, when dealt with racism and by Rutledge. I remember. You know, so they they did a you know a lot of work, a lot of conscious type of music as well, and 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 yeah, activism work and things like that. So they were like definitely, I, I think one of the first the earliest people to to do that called queendom anyway that was a, another another fact but queendom of kush i like that name instead of kingdom queendom queendom of kush 350 right. years of rule and then we all and i like that you talk about these other names instead of just hot hot chap suit uh because that's the one of the big Fame, you know the famous names or whatnot, but we we have well, these we have a, these women. The Hatshepsut was in Egypt, and these women are yeah. specifically in um in Kush, but they knew each right. other. I mean, they knew Sheba. This is the same time period. Sheba was around. They knew um Cleopatra, which you know we know she has mixed heritage of, of, of Roman as well as Egyptian and most likely Kushite. Mm. Um, so these these pyramids are the pyramids in the U.S. dollar has a has these pyramids on the back of them. Right. And it's not another type of pyramid, but it, we know that it's a Nubian pyramid. And this is you get another view of the of the features and that they're um, very- oh, So you said behind the dollar, the, the pyramid is not only just the Egyptian pyramid, it's a, it's a Nubian pyramid. No, there's only a Nubian pyramid. There's, there's only a Nubian pyramid behind the dollar. Egyptian and the US right. dollar. Right, um, right. Yep. And so the Nubian pyramid's unique feature is the mortuary to give grave offerings to the deceased. We talked about this. And this is just the inside of that, which has would have would, would have had um, you know, writing on it and painting on it, um, the stars on top, which means that when people go to become an ancestor, they become they go back to the stars 
which is the materials were made of the same materials inside of our body, the stars are made of. And so the ancient Egyptians were not only spiritual, but this, there was very little difference between the spirituality and science. They were one. Um, um, mathematics, uh, which is a form of science, and spirituality um, are one in all of these in all of these systems. And this is just a little view of the side. You see that um, lip on the side of the pyramid. That's a Nubian feature. Jebel Barkel, um, I reached there finally in December 25th, 2016. So I had to mark the date. This was my, what I would say, my Christmas present. Right, and this right. is the home of Amun, Amen, um, Amen, Amen or Yemen. Yemen is named after Amen. Um, that's what Yemen means. Um, this is the, uh, the person himself is said to have lived on top of Jebel Barkel. There was a temple to Amun that was on top of this feature. In Jebel, oh, oh, I just want to say I noticed there's a few people watching now live. Um, we, we're talking about ancient Nubia. We have Nubia Ward Ford on, on the screen right now um, out of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, she is uh, giving a presentation about ancient Nubia. If there's any questions, please drop a question on the live chat. So when she's doing a presentation, I can ask if if not, then, uh, yeah, well, I guess you guys will check it out the video later. And I can still probably shoot her a question if you guys got questions. You, yeah. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. Um, Jebel meaning Markle Mountain and Barkle meaning the ship. So the mountain of the ship. Um, the oral history says that Amen used to come in, and go in sparks and fire from, the, from here. So make your own decisions about what that could mean or does mean. Um, the front of it is where um, they thought that the Kufi and the royal um, headwear came from mm. this area. And this part was at one time a snake because Tanahesi meaning um, land of the serpent, meaning the land of God. Meat was representative as the earth God. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything negative. It was very positive. It meant that um, it was the land of God where God was worshiped here. And I climbed up to the top here where you could see wow, the, nice. Nile, um, the Nile River. You can see, it looks like there's a person standing right uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. um, so I was able to climb up on the top wow. um, of Jebel Barkle, and you can nice. see the Nile River in the front of it, towards where the where the, you see that snake image in the back of it. You can see the pyramids that are um, there at, at, at El Peru. Okay. Nice. So just a close up on it, on it, and these are actually my pictures that I took there on the site, nice. and um, a close up of these sober, the serpent, which was cobra. At one time, there was a gold plaque that was right here, okay. a huge gold plaque yeah, um, made by Taharka. And Taharka has that on his birthday that the sun would hit that plaque and reflect back to his burial site um, so that he would be rebirthed. And there's waters that are under there. So he would actually be rebirthed through the waters just like a, a natural baby. And that he would actually return to ancient Kush, whereas he was from now. Taharka was a ruler of, was a pharaoh, was a ruler of Egypt and Kush, and just right. a wonderful warrior. Him and his family's it, mission was to return. What, to wasn't Kush. wasn't I, I read somewhere that Taharka, the name, uh, somebody, there's a name of some uh, island off of Europe, or well, I, I can't remember what it, it's kind of a corrupt, corruption of the name of Taharka, and they, they, I don't know. I, f I forgot what the name of the. Well, just, when it comes back to you, let, let us yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. For, sure, don't for know. sure. No, it was. Um, hmm, I got to think about it. But yeah, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Kerma, <laughs> Kerma um, is the oldest city in the world. Um, it's ancient Kush. I'm kind of jumping around here. I don't want to run out of time. And no. give it a chance. Okay. Kerma is the oldest city in the world. The population up to about 100,000, probably even was more than 100,000. Um, circa 6,000 BC, so 8,000 years ago or more. Even though people say that I think it's just Sepi Tepi, or which is the the naval that old archaeological site in um, in Turkey is older. This is actually older, and that this is a formulated city as well. Yeah, the Gobleki Teki or whatever they always yes. try to say that that's uh, yeah. yeah, that's the big big deal. Europe is really trying to um, right. You know, Push um, that on there. Push that over there, but Turkey is not not in Europe. 
Right, so, right. Um, you know, so even so, and then even at this time period, most likely that there were um, black people there anyway. Um, but, you know, that's another thing if they find it because they are starting to find bodies and graves in there. So right. um, Charles Benet, a Swiss archeologist, he's working in um, Kerma. He's done okay. a lot of wonderful, wonderful work at Dookie Jail, the Red Mound. He's been at that site for over 30 years. And I want to share with you some things that he is that he has wow. revealed. This is um, this is a defufa, a defufa. They thought at one time they thought it was a fort, um, and now we're the, the thinking is changing that it is more temple-like, um, that people could go to the top of it, you know, and and you know people are saying, well, you know, it's got these windows in here. Temples don't typically have windows, so this the the, the jury is still out on exactly what this defufa was used for mm. in this time period but it it was a high it had a very very high front on it and could have been used for a lot of different things but this structure is more than eight thousand years old one of the oldest structures in the world okay so the these going back these are the pyramids of Jebel Barco but going back to this um defufa this is another view of it and then you see all of the temples that are connected to it Many times the great halls um, in the palaces, the palaces are built there. Um, Tutmosis's palace was connected to it. They have the trees in front of it. the columns are representative of the trees. And so the question is the origins of ancient Kush again is how far south is south? We get these kings and these pharaohs talking about that we're from the south. And typically people think they're talking about the south in the little border of ancient Kush is where they're talking about. That's as far as they're going. Mm. But my question seems to be, I think South goes a lot further and we'll talk about how far I think it goes. So these are the palaces outside. Kerma, uh, in Kerma, we got this dookie gel. And you see, again, you see these columns which are holding up um, the, the roofs of these buildings. The um, columns represent trees. In that practice um, of trees representing of being in the front of these um, sacred buildings comes from Uganda. And so again, how far south is south? Because we're getting this Ugandan culture that is very influ influential in the southern, in the southern as well, uh, the southern culture as well as going up to, 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 to the north. Right. If the origins are from the south and if Egyptians are building upon Kushite culture, then they're borrowing and they're taking it with them. And you see, this is this is the archaeological site which they kind of put a little uh, a, a stone fence around. But all, as far as you can see, this is part of the archaeological site. And if you look very closely in between those palm trees, right in front of that site, you can see where the remnants of archaeological evidence is too. So this is part of the city. Remember, this this city had a residence of more than a hundred thousand people. A hundred thousand people could have lived in that small area we're talking about, as far as you can see, was, was Kerma. Okay, now you get a clear picture where they were clearing out a lot of the archeological sites and those, those columns are representing trees. And only women can go into this part of, this part of the palace and they get rituals um, for the community, for the strength of the community. Now, one thing that's, that is particular to ancient Egyptian and Kushite culture. In coronations, when kings were turned into pharaohs or the leaders were turned into pharaohs, they had to be a representative of, of Amun, the wife of Amun, which was Mut, all right? So the wife had certain rituals that she had to do. And this comes from this tr tradition that comes from Uganda. Again, Another uh, view of Dookie Gel. Um, they've unearthed this, and this is what you were looking at um, now. But just this is just spectacular um, as an archaeologist. So, so, so many traces, as you said, and I've heard that before of uh, uh, you know African culture from deeper south that are the, that you can see in uh, Kushite or Egyptian culture that they mm -hmm. had that um, that it, it you know. They have they had some influence um, from, from the south, and it shows that, that there was some sort of migration of 
people, and I, I guess you might, you said you probably going to get into a little bit of it. Um, a little bit of it. it. Yeah, because I, because I always wondered um, how, uh, how, 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 how further south, you know, they, the Africans kind of from Egyptian culture, some of those people that are, that took over the Kushite civilization, how their origin, did some of them come from? Exactly. They just didn't pop out of nowhere. Right. They yeah. came, they came from someplace. There's all kinds of theories. This is a well um, there, the architectural uh, perfection there of this well. Wow. That's it's just wonderful. It's amazing. Yeah. This is a close up of, of the well. You see the well down there in the far right uh, down here. And another one, another type of well reservoir. So they're holding water for their community. As you can see, it doesn't look like there are any lakes, nearby lakes. So they're actually digging down um, to get uh, water from Orphans. beneath the yep. ground and having reservoirs. Aquifers and stuff, yeah. Aquifers and rainwater as well. Yeah. And then you can see that the structure looks like a fort, like there was a surround of uh, some type around the city. And you know, some people say it looks almost um, like castles and things. So this is where the idea of castles came from, from ancient, from See, that's what, ancient that's past. What, that's, what, that's what, you know, that's what some of our children, our children need to be doing on their Minecraft is building these building ancient these. Nubian, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Recreate. And, the and the tradition comes from far south, from, as far as South Africa. The right. Zulu's royal crawl is the same style. So mm -hmm. we so we know that there's an influence and people that the, the culture, the cultural continuity comes from this area. These right. columns are representative of trees mm -hmm. surrounding them. So this sacredness and this in this in, in the woman being involved, even the circles, even some of the structures being close to uh, looking like a breast. Right. These are these cultural continuities where um, the woman they do, was, they do they do say it. nothing brand new under the sun you know they they, they get it from somewhere they definitely from someplace. Yeah. so the ugandan oh, royalty at an earlier point in time were closely aligned with spiritual practice women were connected to the forest that we said the wife of amu represent the power which um the power of the most high was passed to royalty through the mother of the pharaoh she is who passed the power and this came from this culture coming from Uganda. Now, remember these artificial, uh, these borders are artificial. So when we're talking about Nile Kushite culture, we're including Uganda. We're Berlin including, Conference didn't come around yet. <laughs> right, we're <laughs> including Kenya. Right. We're including um, um, places that are near to it, the Congo. Mm -hmm. We're including uh, Zimbabwe, which is right under there. So we're, you know, Kushite culture just didn't come in a vacuum. There right. are influences and those people are the same people and they have the same culture. Um, this is Charles Benet talking about this sacred forest right here and talking about, you see where those steps are, that it looks like there could have been a throne there or something that sat on there. Um, you, know, there you know, like you said, the jewelry is still out. He's doing some remarkable work it's probably one of the most open-minded um, archaeologists similar to Dr. K. Um, so I have great respect for Dr. Charles Benet's work there. Definitely, I'm about to check him out. Mm. And this is um, more of the forest. The columns of ancient temples of Sudan could, could seem to be very closely related to the sacred forest of Uganda, the folklore and spiritual practices, okay? Mm. Again, the fort. Um, there, there were we find in, in some of the structures in Perma, there are bathrooms where 12 bathrooms where they have a water flowing through that's carrying the refuse out. Um, they have um, uh, uh, they're divided by marble walls, you know, with hmm. doors in them. So we're, we're talking about this kind of thing going on for 12,000 years ago. Um, people say, well, what Amazing. happens? How come the culture didn't keep on evolving? This is this is where archaeology and history and stuff, it takes a break. And in, in academia, all of these researches are secular, which means they're separate. You got the environmental archaeologists studying yeah. differently. You got the historians studying differently. You have the paleontologists studying differently. Right. You have right. the geographers studying differently. We have the archaeologists studying not as a group. 
where a team should encompass all of these people so that we can tell the whole story. Wow. Um, environment, you know, the environment changed drastically, but I'm one, my, one of my theories is that the, that the Kushites <clears throat> had something to do with that change of environment because they were making weapons for, their, for this army all the time. They had to have an arsenal of steel weapons for an army of more than 100,000 men. Everywhere you go, you will see this iron, piles of iron slag from these furnaces that were everywhere. So where did they get the wood for those furnaces is from the forests that were around there. So if you deforest the area, you're going to get climate change. Right. So they probably had something to do with this. Right. In, in, in this image right here, one of the one of the chief comments I could, oh, it looks like a British castle, a British fort. Well, there's no British fort that is that is eight thousand eight to ten thousand years old. Right. They're only about seven, eight hundred years ago. So where do you think the technology came from? Okay. This is um, Professor Usman Ali, which you, you would probably you probably have seen him and don't know. He's the archaeologist that, that in the Africa series. That, the that's, you in the, that's you in the picture? That's me. That's me. And, um, wow. That, that, how many years ago was that? <laughs> that, 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 was, that was seven years ago. Seven years ago? Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's Dr. Usman Ali, um, you know, right there in the, um, right there and mm. the, the University of Khartoum. He's the one who invited me. But he recovered a university from 4,000 BC, the 6,000 wow. years old, which was for the education of women in ancient Kush. Gotcha. So the traditions of egalitarianism, education and stuff, women were educated and were, were equal in the society. If not, um, if not elevated a little higher, because people understand if you elevate your women, that you elevate your society. Um, and that is truly African. The undeciphered funerary text from Sedanga. Um, this is what I was talking about. This is the only, um, this is the most recent, <clears throat> in a very important find. This, um, Stela talks about um, some of the activities of a pharaoh that's buried in the Sedanga cemetery. <clears throat> it talks about, it talk, the only thing they can decipher is his name and the year. Because this is, this is Meroitic text. Meroitic text has not been fully deciphered at this time. And well, that's, what um, I, that's what I hear. And it's very difficult to... Uh, it's very... Well, uh, you know, until they find a Rosetta Stone, something right. where they can kind of compare it to. Right. Once they get a total comparison, they get to the writings, then they'll be able to decipher it. One of the pe people that are, are chiefly in, involved in this is Claude Reilly. Claude Reilly is a linguist, and he has gone into the mountains and found remnants of what he says, Greek text in the mountain. But, but you know, I'm like, are we sure that the Greek is really Greek? Because we get some Nubian pyramids that were an early Greek culture before Greeks had reached their pinnacle, which they didn't reach the pinnacle until after they attended Waset, the Egyptian schools, um, to learn science, to turn, learn philosophy, to learn mathematics, learn the art of civilization. So is is it really elements of Greek or is it elements of ancient African languages from this area? So that's just a question. I'm not a linguist and I don't want to get anybody right. ruffled up, but it's just, you know, it's just that we can't, we need to look at things differently and make sure that we're, we're being open-minded about some of these things. Right. Okay. Um, the Taharka from, was from the 25th dynasty, one of the most famous, um, uh, one of the most famous pharaohs, intense whole tension, intention of his family, which was Pai, Shabaka, and himself, his grandfather, his uncle, were all to restore um, ancient Nubia to its rightful place, um, to restore the kingdom. And Tutmosis, which follows in the 18th dynasty, which follows, um, you know, that same tradition of, of, uh, getting, you know, because he had a presence in ancient Kerma as well. Um, um, these, this is um, of the pharaohs from the 20, from the 18th dynasty. And you see Taharka in here. And they were, they were systematically dismantled as if in ritual form to, um, to, to take their power away. 
we see that this clean cut unto her his head, that is to decapitate him, to take his power away. You know, because even today, you know, um, they talk about the existence of Taharka and how strong Taharka was. So they didn't never took away Taharka's story. So some of Taharka's mission to that effect was definitely, was definitely, he was definitely effective because he restored <clears throat> a lot of the culture and a lot of the history. Um, and this is what some of the artifacts that were covered and put back together. This is that artifact that you saw on the ground here. Taharka's head was put right back on his statue here. Um, and these are other kings. These are Taharka, Tutmosis, and these are other pharaohs and um, leaders from the 18th to the 25th dynasty. Um, the ones that are, that are very, very clear and distinctive are from the um, 18th dynasty, which is, we know that um, uh, the culture had reached its pinnacle. So we have Taharka's, um, the writing, you know, tell about Taharka, anything that's in a circle, is the name of the royal person, which is Taharka in this case, okay? The great Pharaoh Taharka, his pyramid, I talked about how the sun goes over the top of his pyramid and, and points and in, in lights up a, a, which used to be a gold plate on the side of Jebel Barkle that said his name and the light bounced back to, to shine directly over the top of this pyramid um, to birth, to rebirth Taharka on his birthday. Wow. So I just, you know, the 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 mathematical precision to wow. make that happen is is wonderful, Absolutely. is wonderful. And you know, we're talking about six ninety BC. We're talking about nearly three thousand years ago. Right, so, right, right. They right. get you to think. They get you to think about modern day humans. You know, are we that much smarter and than? <laughs> You know, they were no, uh, no, I'm we like, weren't. I'm like, yeah. my, we might have degressed, you know. Yeah, we probably, <laughs> we probably have, yeah. we probably have. And this is some of Taharka's wife. This is me in front of here, hmm. in front of um, Taharka's wife. I always get myself, and we know Taharka had four wives, and I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm the fifth wife right here, right? I, right. Said, I love Taharka so much. Hmm. Um, so the these are the names of um, his wives. The last one, that a hip, hip, the skin. We're not sure if that was a wife or if that was his mother. Okay. So he may have had four wives. Um, this is Kerma Museum. The top of the museum is fashioned in Nubian fashion, where the top is white and it's curved. Was this was this one not? The... This is the, the Kerma Museum. Kerma Museum. Where, okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. These are this is where all those artifacts came from that we're gotcha. talking about with Taharka. Gotcha. And so it's curved in the Nubian fashion where you get this curved cut top so it stays cooler inside. The sun doesn't rest on one particular flat portion. The curved tops create kind of like a, 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 a you know, a cooler, it can be said that that some of these buildings were, were um, put in a way where air would be cooled as they went into them. So in other words, they had an air conditioning system as right. well. Um, and we're talking about three to 7,000 years ago, you know, so, Three to ten thousand years ago. So again, these people are are thinking their way through this right. and um, uh, creating some architectural and engineering marvels. Is what far, far from savages. Far, yeah. far, far from that. Far from that. Um, going back to Uganda, Maneno, um, she said our cultural um, spread through the center of the North, East Africa, and beyond. Um, the people in Uganda are very astute on their culture. This young lady was 19 years old at the time. Beautiful sister. Yeah. And, and she spoke 17 languages from her wow. area, English, mm. um, Africans, and some other languages. And she and she told a story of, you know, the, the culture being very, very consistent in that area and that they were Kushites. The term mm. Shabaka, which I mentioned the best um, that's uh, uh, um, Taharka's uncle. Well, Shabaka, uh, Shabaka, that term. Kabaka, I heard about. I heard about the. We heard about the Shabaka stone, or something. Mm. When they talk about mathematics and mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the Shabaka <laughs> is also a Kushite's king name, and mm. it's in direct direct relation to Ugandan name Kabaka, meaning king in Uganda. So there we get this cultural continuity. A few of the letters changed, 
but we know that this is not a coincidence that the culture came from the South. Mm. Okay, this is a map of Uganda being right under modern day Sudan, as I mentioned, um, Ethiopia, Kenya, all of these were, now we know Ethiopia today says that they're Kush. Right. They're part of Kush. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, what about um, the Congo and Burundi, all these places that have been carved out? Those people are Kushite too. So it's time to get their name, Tanzania, which is a very rebellious as well as a progressive place. Right. Those people. <laughs> My yeah, Tanzanian, you know. my Tanzanian people. I got, I got some uh, on my, on my Facebook, and I know they're gonna check out this video too. Most, yeah. most respect to them. <laughs> and Kenya, and reasons. Kenyans, and you know a bunch of different. So out. these people are also Kushite. We, we, yeah. you know, this the culture. You know, you can look at the Maasai people and tell mm. that they have Kushite um, absolutely orientation. So yeah. you know, we have to stretch how far south is south when right. those pharaohs are talking about the south. Now, here's a map um, of Nubia and how the Nubian influence. The brown part is the Kushite Empire. So you see that it went further, that it went further south. The red outlines are the Egyptian Empire, which went up into the Middle East. The royalty and the citizens possibility links to Kenya, Botswana. Is this, our, is this architectural similar? The one on the right is from Botswana. The one on the left is part of the palace of Amana Kushito and Amenemaris there in, in Kush. Do these look similar? Like this could have these, these architectural styles could have come up and guess how old the one on the right is. This is a gold mine that it was, it's more than 300,000 years old. Wow. So the culture is going, is coming from that area. If someone is building something like that, there are no, there's no mortar in between the stones. Mm. There are just small stones in between. Same in ancient Kush. Same. That's almost in like the, the beginning Egypt. of Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Well, you know. They, well, they, well, well, they push that back though. They, this you know, is even pushed, and, it's, and it gets further and further yeah, back. Further back. Yeah. I think the Homo sapiens built that three hundred thousand years ago as well. Right. Right. You know, so this is some kinds of things that are find, they're finding that is pushing these dates back. Right. Okay. Ancient Kush is modern day Sudan. The name is older. Its origins define pinpoint where the name came from. Kesh, we know, comes from, means sacred, coming from India, means sacred grass. Ancient Kemet, which means land of the black. Kush is also used in the Hindu, Hindu Kush mountain range, meaning black killer. All right, again, the sacred black, um, the black killer in the mountains, they probably, they could have possibly named that mountain range after the Kushite army who was known to be black killers, right? Right, I heard, so, I heard some theories about that as well. Yeah. yeah. And you got, so, you got Clyde Winters out there talking a lot about the, that connection too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go, the sacred glass, a particular grass may have originated mm. in ancient Kush. And so did they get that grass from Kush that they that the Indians talked to Rama, you know, smoking that sacred grass, and then they can mm. talk to the most high. Right. Um, so that's right. The the colloquial name, you know, the common name in our community when we talk right. about the sacred Kush. grass, mm -hmm. what do they call it? They call it Kush. Right. I had that's a woman right. said, I think you should change your um the name it, you know, that you're talking about the civilization because it's it's like you're talking about marijuana. I said, Well, yeah. you know, well, use hey. it as an educational piece. People have to know as to there's a right. reason it's called that. Right. Because it came from there. Right. Okay. Hindu Kush mountain range. This is it to the right. You know, you get a picture of why they may call it the black killer. You just have about have to kill yourself to get over the some of those peaks. Some of those peaks are sharp and tall. Right. And if, and if you got hmm. up there, I mean, why would you even take that route uh, to go over the mountain range? I would definitely find a flatter. Um, place to go over, but this is the Hindu Kush right. mountain. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That means black killer. <laughs> the name Kush is also in Turkey. And Han Hannibal and his elephants probably would still win up. <laughs> Hannibal and his <laughs> elephants, I don't know what route they took, but I don't think that. I don't think no, that's no, no, it. no, not like that. <laughs> Couldn't right. have been it. Um, <laughs> um, there are seven gates of Kush in Turkey. The Kushite Empire has influences in ancient territories. And the significance is further in antiquity that is documented. 
Um, we know that Tunisia is Tanit, land of Tanit, the land of Nit, the land of Neat. India, um, you know, Uganda research, the research is evolving, my research is evolving. How far south? There's definitely there's definitely a connection with uh, African India and in the, you know they're not you know in the, in the Bangladesh and all the other connected to to India. Finally, the Indians yeah. are may, are are um, accepting that mm -hmm. there is some connection to Africa. You Absolutely. know, as they release their British mindset, right? They're beginning to um, to accept there is some relation to Africa. Right. Right. Cushion Kemets were both metropolises that drew people to the area due to jobs. Present day Sudanese represent those of the past. That means that there's people from Nilotic cultures that come from the mountains. You get the Nuba, you get the Noir, you get, you know what I mean? There are people there from Uganda, there are people there from, from Ethiopia, there are people there from Eritrea. So just like in the past, you get people that are drawn to the area and that was probably part of ancient Kush in the first place. Now to the question of, you know, were these people black? This skull being 2,500 years old, where we can see the spirals are, 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 are spirals that are they're connected with black people. We can tell, and you can see a little bit of the skin there, that these are dark people, these are black people with black people's hair, just as, mm. just as much as anything else in this skull being 5,500 years old. 40, um, 4,500 years old, excuse me. So these are some of the Nubian children that I ran into, Muhammad and his sister and brother mm. that lived close to me. And these are Nubians. And these children will call themselves Arabs, okay? So when you talk about, you know, uh -huh. who are the Arabs, these are the Arabs that they're talking about. They're not talking about the East, the Middle Eastern Arabs. These are right. Arabs, the people that have adopted Islam Mm. Islam was adopted in about 600 to 500 BC. Okay. Gotcha. AD, AD, I'm sorry. So we, you know what I mean? They had, their culture was intact before right. this. So there's a blend of um, Nubian culture and uh, Islam. These are men, these men will call themselves Arab as well. And they are from Northern Sudan, okay? Right. These women are, are uh, were studying for their degree in archaeology. So these women, this is this was taken about 2010. This is 10 years ago, 11 years ago. These women are probably PhDs, have a family, mm. you know what I mean? And they're archaeologists. And on top of it, I just wanted people to see how beautiful our Nubian women are. These beautiful women and, and men that I'm showing you are indigenous to the area. These are also Kushite men. These men are from, are from further south. Mm. And these are the people that could, would have been, their blood is from the first dynasty. Mm. Okay, so these are, this is the way the people from the first dynasty would have looked. But these are all of those different people. I, I purposely show three, three to four different complexions so that you can know them that it's a metropolis made of all of these different kinds of people. And all of these people call themselves Nubians. This is myself and a little girl. The little girl to my left is in, we are in Darfur at this place at that present time. She said she was Arab. So again, what's the difference between the Arab on my left side and me? Y'all look the same. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. People, oh, yeah. people I got you. could actually say that was my daughter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, yep. And this is traditional Nubian um, Nubian wear. Um, mm. It's called a taupe. And you see the lady on the left who was from Dangala. She mm. actually has scarification in her face, which is traditional in ancient Nubia as well. And so this is traditional um, wear um, being started in the in the mid to mid to early 1800s. Influence, of course, but you can see from India. Once again, we get this Indian influence mm -hmm. by a woman walking down the street. The genetic breakdown of people, um, you look right here, we say Sudanese. And when they're calling Sudanese Arab, they're talking about, I just wanted to make sure when we put this up on the screen that people understood who I was talking about when I said Sudanese Arab. Gotcha. Those are the black people we just saw. Mm -hmm. So you can see right here, that most of their DNA, more than, almost more than half, is East African and West African, mm -hmm. all right? 
So we got, you know what I mean? This is who they are. This is who they are genetically. And then we have a little bit of, we should they call a ham. I don't know, that's a technical term, but basically Ethiopian and Somalian. And then we have a little bit of Middle Eastern and then right at the end, they have a little bit of European. I think that was probably, I don't understand how European would get into the, into their um, bloodline, but this is what they, they're saying. We know DNA tests are, are completely accurate. These are some of the foods that just, you know, I can't mention Sudan without mentioning the food. The falafel, the fool, the, um, the, the, um, the hummus. And these are the type, this, a whole plate like this, every time I go visit somebody's house, is prepared just for me. And they expect me to eat it all. <laughs> and, right. and, and now Sudan is also called the gateway to Africa. One of the reasons I think right. it's called the gateway to Africa is because... I thought, Ghana, I thought Ghana was. They call it the gateway to no, Africa. No, I got you. I got you. But yeah. that's what they people call it. Now they call it. It's probably the gateway for African Americans. Got it, right? I don't know. Right? The, I think the they call it that way no. because of- <laughs> it, it, it's, it's easy. It's easier for us to, uh, yeah, because it's so modernized for us. But Sudan, I'm, I'm, I believe. I, I think it's really. because of the hospitality. Mm. Um, you know, there's there's stories, ancient old stories and families that people have told me. How right. people come from come from Arabia and mm. come into um, come into Sudan and come into these beautiful households after people have offered them their hospitality and mm. the people you know this is that during the Muslim crusades would slash their throats and take, mm. and take their jewels after they've been so hospitable so this is you know just mm. like that so yeah again you know just the story of Shabaka and you know ending up this with you know, the restoration. One of the reasons I study archaeology is to restore ancient Kush. I'm helping Taharka out and his family. So it's restore ancient Kush to its proper place in history. And to let people know that ancient Kush was a major influence in ancient Kemet. Absolutely. That, that, that the culture came and to, and to help rejuvenate the story of that empire. Now with that being now with that being said, you know, some people will, will will say that you have some people trying to do revisionist history out there. Yes. You know, from restoration to revision. <laughs> well, we don't want to revise yeah, yeah. Right, it. Right, 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 right. We just want this, you know, we have plenty of information, which right. you mentioned Anthony Browder's work. Yeah. What his work is so, so. You can ask Anthony Browder when I, when I spoke about ta- uh, Taharka. I, I I I don't yeah I mentioned that earlier I I think I don't know if I heard it from him or somewhere else or maybe I heard it wrong something about uh Gab- Gab- Gibraltar <laughs> I can't even say it. you can say it. Gib- Gibraltar Jebobarco? no 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 the island I'm, I, Gibraltar. Gibraltar Gibraltar Gibraltar, Gibraltar. Is, I that's Taharka's that's the bastardization of Taharka's name that's what you're trying to say that's what I was trying to. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get at. I think I've heard mm-hmm. somewhere about that because I know it's called Mountain of Tariq, and then somebody said something. Of, yeah, some something with that oh, name, really? and, and yeah, something with that name in Gibraltar was connected. And I heard that a Gibraltar while ago. Gibraltar to Herka. I have to. Um, I have to do some research on that. Right, but, right, right. You know? But anyway, that that's. Well, that's. I'm glad you came to you, so you, so mm-hmm. I know where to go with that. Right, right. But um, but anyway. That's the reason I do this, is to restore these ancient Kushites to the history books, because they should be in the history books. It shouldn't be an aside. Yeah. It shouldn't be something that's added. It shouldn't. It should be just like we're studying ancient mm. hist- history books that is, you know, a couple of pyramid graphs about, about ancient Kemet. Ancient mm. Kush should also be in there. Absolutely. But, you know, let's let's mm-hmm. give them a whole chapter, you mm-hmm. know, instead of a, just a paragraph. <laughs> into, you know. Right. Dr. Um, Anderson Thompson, my mentor, it almost looks like Browder right there. Well, let, uh, old, yeah, old version, I, you know, I never thought about a little, that. A little bit. Yeah. It, a little bit. Dr. Thompson is, um, you know, and Dr. Thompson also um, was very, very kind to Anthony Browder. Mm. I've seen Anthony Browder and, and, and Dr. Thompson conversations too. Mm. We lost it, Dr. Thompson in 2019. Um, but, you know, one of our last conversations, he said, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep keep up the good work. Movement. So, you know, I promised Dr. Thompson 
I would keep on with the good work. Wow. And so that ends my presentation. I just wanted to make sure that you had time for questions and Q&A. And um, you know, I didn't take up the whole time period. Oh, no, you did good. Okay. Yeah. So I can stop sharing my screen. OK. Yeah, let me see if I can go out and in on it. Yeah. yeah, we haven't had any questions, but uh, it is what it is. So, you know, I don't always get questions all the time, and uh, but uh, maybe somebody will see the video and ask a question um, to, to me later, or they'll drop the question underneath the video. And with this video, once I um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put your uh, some of the same links that you through email that you sent to me and and uh, put it underneath the video so they can directly uh, contact you or whatnot if if need be or i don't know they can see some some of your contacts that that the the website was that your that's your website or yeah right and it's called and it's called uh ancient nubian cities that uh, ancient nubian okay ancient yeah nubian cities.com also she runs the the archaeological group the Nub called nubian archaeological project yeah, that right there. And then also that Facebook group, too. You... Facebook is Archaeology of the African oh, World. World. So please, you can um, join add in here. Right. You can have discussions. In right. my um, Facebook moniker is Nubia Mornike with M-O-R-E-N-I-K-E. -E. Right, right. Oh, somebody just said, tell her thank you. Very informative. Just now. You're welcome. All right. Thank you for listening. <laughs> So no, I think we'll 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 wrap it up. You Thank know, you, Robert, that, for that having me. Definitely, and uh, hopefully uh, in the future, if they have an ASCAC uh, conference, um, yeah. Do you know when the next one is? That you said is most likely probably be virtual, but they they probably mm -hmm. haven't did any have promo the, for it, have they? The Midwest one is there's come, one coming up in the fall. Yeah. Um, around October or so. There's one coming up in the fall, but I'll keep I'll keep you in, you know, because you could attend anyone, any yeah. region, you can attend any region of the conference. So True I'll that. just they, I don't think they really have those out here, you know. I'm in Norway, so it's like well, if, if that, they, that I know of, I don't, you know, I don't Yeah, if if there was a a, a member be. that set up a conference and you want to become a member and set up a conference for people to come, sure, it could be right. There. That's a lot of work right there. Man. It is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right, right. All right. Well, uh, thank you for the presentation. And uh I will you well, you already know the the, the link. Uh so I don't even have to send it to you because you know where to, you know where you know where it's at. You're on my Facebook. So definitely. Um I will I will put the um thumbnail in there and then add some of your links underneath and, and all those things. So anybody watching, if you like it, like this video. Don't forget to subscribe, you know, and we'll continue to have people that I find interesting coming for interviews. So if you whatever point that you come in and on my channel, you you know, just be there for the ride. <laughs> anyway, I uh, thank you. All right. Thank you. So thank you, Robert. All right. You have a